Hello everyone and thank you for joining India's first AR VR MR podcast XR Home. I'm your host Eddie Avil and this platform was designed with a singular vision and that vision is to shape India's AR VR MR growth story and to help you understand about this transformational technology which holds potential to change the way we live work and play XR Om is also a forum for Indian XR leaders enthusiasts influencers and those first movers who have played a pivotal role in shaping India's XR industry I had a lovely conversation with Mr Clyde de Souza he is the author of two books Think in 3D which has been peer reviewed by Hollywood top 3D directors and late 3D film historian Ray Zon Memories with Maya his second book a hard sci-fi novel received critical acclaim from science personalities he has been amongst the early movers when it comes to immersive film making he has been part of companies such as Shaf Broadcast Private Limited Wiscraft International 3D Solutions UAE and Real Vision currently he is an immersive media advisory on contract basis with Heros International I really enjoyed this conversation and I hope you do too. So Timmy you've been in the industry what uh, Nasdio pushed you to get into VR and you've been one of the early early movers right Yeah for me I think I guess VR was a logical extension from 3D filmmaking mm-hmm. um so back in what 2010 2011 when we had anaglyph 3 3D mm-hmm. you know the ones with the red blue glasses mm-hmm. it started off with that and mm-hmm. then it actually 3D movies took mm-hmm. off and i've always been experimenting with that mm-hmm. never really pr- like produced a hollywood or worked on a hollywood film mm-hmm. at least directly mm-hmm. but indirectly behind the scenes i used to get a lot of you know um people sending in questions and right. stuff like that which actually led me to collectively put together an anthology of articles which I used to write on my blog mm-hmm. and publish it self publish it as a book called mm-hmm. Think in 3D. Mm-hmm. I put it up on Amazon mm-hmm. and uh left it out there. A few sales happened and then one day I got this message from uh um uh, Dimitri Portelli who is who was the 3D choreographer for Martin Scorsese when they were shooting Hugo. Wow. Uh and he was like, you know, we really like the book and stuff like that and of course I was like Martin needs to write a review and he was like no he can't he won't but I will. and you know so he, he left a review it's on amazon and then a l- lot of the other choreographers from the industry like mm. marcus alexander from rot of the titans left a review so it built up from there but mm. the thing is um vr is not at least video vr is not so much different from stereoscopic 3d filmmaking right. it's just mm-hmm. that it's 3d 360 mm. so it was a logical extension and yeah. um, you know you've always been watching the old what do you call it the um the view master kind of thing mm-hmm. for 3D movies mm-hmm. and the VR headset is completely an extension of that with head tracking in mm-hmm. so for me it's two areas one is the of course the holy grail is the interactive VR mm-hmm. volumetric filmmaking and mm-hmm. stuff like that until we get there um cost wise mm-hmm. uh film video film um VR filmmaking is actually you know what's interesting so that's probably how the thing happened and mm-hmm. i've always been behind the scenes okay. but i said from 2019 onwards let me get you know let let's say not in front of the camera but literally behind the camera rather than writing articles and writing uh, you know things like technical i'll actually be hands on right. uh, creating stuff so right. that's where it started from lovely so i i think we we know each other from uh, yeah 2017 or 2018 yeah, yeah, yeah. and somehow you you say that you've been behind uh, the scene but i've always seen you like out there you've been there at all, all the possible uh, uh conferences and, and 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 i think you're one of the most um, well read of most well informed person when it comes to ar vr uh, 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 over here so tell me about uh, your film derogate well it was um I actually wanted to make a full-fledged film at that time but mm. there was no budget. Mm. So the next best thing was okay let me get it uh, down to kind of like a like a comic book format mm. in VR where scenes come out from the pages you literally turn mm. a page of the book uh, and you know the content comes out or you get in mm. either either one of the two. And of course back then again everything was self-funded so I never the the actual shooting mm. was done on on the Ricoh Theta cameras mm. and that the first generation of the Theta cameras did not even have video 
So all I could do was stop motion. Right. And there was this nice, funny uh, morphing effect in After Effects that I literally gave you this kind of thing that fit well with the old story, or at least mm. I molded the story mm. to do that. So I actually shot that. Mm. And I was thinking to myself, well, you know, it's a 3D film. Uh, it's in 360. It's a 3D film. You put two Rico theater side by side and you shoot it. And then I was in for a shock when I put it into After Effects because the first, the front 180 is perfect stereo. And when you look behind, the left eye becomes the right eye yeah. of the thing. And it suddenly it's like I had to chop it and then find a way of fixing this huge parallax seam in there. Yeah. So it was interesting. But uh, the whole motion comic book mm. thing uh, came out from there. I actually paid someone to write an original song mm. in there uh, from yes. the internet. And so there's like a whole original song in there. And then um, Samsung li liked it, so mm -hmm. they put it up on, on the Samsung VR platform. And just two years ago, uh, it was licensed at the Singapore ATF, the Asia TV Forum. How cool is that? Yeah, to a company in China who wanted it for a chain of cinemas that, is, uh, that they've got going. So tell me, I mean, w w was it intended in 2015 that you, did you actually want to do a VR film or it just happened? I, because I, it, it was yeah. a bold move at the it's, yeah. it's a little too yeah. early into yeah. the ecosystem the the technology was still not Correct. there but then you did manage to put out like a brilliant piece yeah thank uh, you i yeah, mean like so. there were some people were talking about yeah. how cuts worked at that time right. i think one of the uh vr filmmakers had said uh, we were very interested because of the way that you did cuts and so yeah although i would have loved it to be a proper film because of the budget it became a kind of a mm. graphic novel with mm. a few uh, scenes in there, but it had everything. It it had uh, graphics composited with live action uh, footage with 3D uh, films uh, because uh, with 3D stereo pieces in there, for example, because they fitted into the panel. Mm -hmm. So it was not. So it was a whole mix of everything. But yes, I wanted to do it as a as a VR piece mm -hmm. that would be, I think, on the then Oculus DK1 and DK2. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. Uh, so it was it. it Find out well. <laughs> ah, lovely. So, so that was back in 2015. Is yeah. there is there anything which is coming up that you would like to share with the audience? Anything uh, that you, because I'm sure right yeah. now the technology is there. You can you can do much better. I mean, the, yeah, 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 definitely. So, so well, the, the the story is uh, I mean the story is based on that on the book Memories with Maya. Mm -hmm. So the whole screenplay is still there. It's just waiting for you know uh, someone to to get into it, and then I'd love to be part of that. Uh, creating an actual film on it because like the starting scene in the comic book version has this thing of the story of, you know, you're flying through mm -hmm. uh, the city of Mumbai mm -hmm. and uh, the skyscrapers and stuff like that. Of course, I had to use uh, After Effects, the software and Element 3D and had this old skyscraper city. They gave me permissions to use it. Mm -hmm. um, Element 3D, the, I forget the guys who made that software. But they gave me permissions. But I'd love to actually shoot it with a drone now. Right. You know, somewhere in in Upper Mumbai, like where I think there is a hotel out there, the Four Seasons. And, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've been to the, to the rooftop bar, <laughs> and I was up there looking at the place. I said, "This is the first scene from that <laughs> film." But yeah, um, getting back to your question, um, nothing from my side. But mm. I'm helping a lot of. Um, OTT platforms now in, right. uh, in Mumbai who are starting up and want to get into the space of creating uh, content. Yeah, India, yeah. So is there is there anything that you would like to share you could talk about at this point in time? Because at this point in time, I see India is just opening up to immersive content. Yeah. So is there yeah. anything there that you would like to share? Well, they definitely are. Well, the last year I was here um, talking to a lot of the platforms, in fact, mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. almost all the big ones. And I found the well, the CTO, CEO level people whom I spoke with were very uh, backward. <laughs> but, but it's changed within one right. year's time right. now. Uh, I think one of the big things that has happened is like if you look at ZTV, mm. a lot of people don't know that they actually announced that they have a patent out mm. and actually went through the patent. And it looks to me like it's some kind of set top box that they're going to that they're working on, mm. which will be in houses and immersive content will actually then be delivered through that set-top box. So you can connect haptic gloves to it. You can probably connect uh, a 3D printer, let's say a food show, mm -hmm. and the whole recipe can be printed out mm -hmm. or like the product printed out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're looking at it. Then Times TV in 2017 did a pilot. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there uh, mm -hmm. for immersive journalism mm -hmm. to show them how to actually capture news pieces um, 
with AR, VR. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were they were keen on it. Right now, Eros is looking at it. So yeah, I'm helping them up set up their kind of like setup. Meaning, besides gear, it's, mm-hmm. it's got to be more about the ability, the appetite for creating the to spot uh, mm-hmm. content to you know to build a piece on that. And that's what I'm actually training them for more that rather than the equipment, the equipment you can just buy it off right, you right. know cameras and vr headsets that don't make a lab or an incubator it's the creative thinking that goes with it so yeah that's yeah. what's happening right now yeah so, so do you see uh, see at this point in time i mean early 2017 i guess uh Bahubali had like a vr edit like the making of yes, vr they did in yeah. vr yeah. then there are these now uh Bollywood production houses, they're doing the making of it, the films in VR. The VR for PR kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, the VR for PR. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, there are actually some pretty well-known filmmakers yeah. who are kind of experimenting with VR. Okay. OTT platforms are also now opening yeah. up and yeah. setting up their own division or actually trying to nudge their creatives to understand immersive technology. Yeah. Where do you see this thing going since you are now an insider you're part of eros kind uh, of yeah. uh, how, how, how how where do you see this going i mean you know what i think one of the biggest mind blocks that a lot of ott platforms out here not just not eros itself but generally from like last year like i said i spoke to all of them they the mind block is that they think that indian content is for india mm. it's for metros it's for tier 1 tier 2 cities or 3 they don't realize, well, they do know it, but they don't realize it, that the OTT app mm. is actually worldwide. Mm-hmm. And it's not only Indians. It's like right now for VR and a- AR, we've been like dying for pieces uh, in any language mm. just to experience it. Oh, yeah. So likewise, there's Indians all over the world. Your market actually is worldwide. Mm-hmm. So wh- what they need to do is definitely um, just open up their minds to understanding that once that is done, the next step is going to be then they'll realize the the potential of actually creating content mm. in regular uh, format as well as like you know besides the vr for pr maybe a side piece maybe a alternative ending mm. uh, or an insight into you know um, a piece that is done into in 2d for the ott platform but that can be lived in vr so something which has got meaning to it right. so that's where that's where i see it it's like i've seen content on the platforms that are there and I've mm. told them pick one of the stories for example it could be uh, let's say on schizophrenia or on suicides and that mm. kind of thing it's a normal piece mm. but then let someone experience that mm. from the perspective of a VR first person kind of thing so things like that as well. so, so how receptive have they been to these ideas or, or the new technology AR, yeah. AR, how? Uh, they, they're getting there I mean to be fair yeah it's a lot of the platforms are uh, mm. getting in. Filmmakers are, mm. like you said, are, mm. are looking at what can be added to mm. the regular film that they're doing. Mm. So yes, right now they are, and I guess because the hardware has become more open, you know, it's more in the market. I guess we were talking earlier about the price being ridiculously right, right, expensive. Right, yeah, right. but still, um, once it's on their heads and then they see it, mm. uh, they actually want to do it. And then you keep reminding them that. This is not only for here. Mm. The content can reach, um, you know, worldwide. So, right. yeah. Do, do you think that there's there's the lack of uh, education or awareness about uh, immersive technology is a drawback? And do you see <clears throat> a solution? Why is China leading mm. in all the cameras and all the VR cameras? So it's not only just an India problem. It's also in the US. Mm. But you could say that yes, yeah, China has got the ability to produce. Um, to make to machine content for uh, machine hardware earlier, but they are the ones producing cameras. Why isn't it being done in India? Mm-hmm. Headsets, that kind of stuff. So, on the one hand, uh, yeah, they are backward in getting it there. But coincidentally, two weeks ago, I was at the IIT Allahabad. Mm-hmm. They called me in there because they are designing a new course for mm-hmm. BTEC with a major uh, in in informatics, media informatics. Mm-hmm. And so then my thing to them was, yeah, you know, get it from the creative tech perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't try to make them filmmakers mm-hmm. because they're, that's a tech co- college. It's, an, it's a B-tech, mm-hmm. you know, so because of a lot of discussions from the other people out there about more like, OK, we'll do a filmmaking course and film appreciation. I said, you know what, that will come in. You first concentrate on problems that are there in like the immersive media field, like cameras 
or like software mm-hmm. uh, shortcomings mm-hmm. like it will be premiered and all that you mm-hmm. know ambisonic audio right. get the btech people to write those plugins and they will then go back to mm-hmm. the film appreciation and all because by default that but if you try and go and make them filmmakers or we get them from a media thing it's probably something that they don't know about right. so it's about the right way of getting mm-hmm. i think approaching the subject of how you educate not right. just getting the topics in right but it's it's very interesting that the btech uh, program is now looking at things like immersive media and mm-hmm. you know so yeah so so besides i mean uh, ar vr mr being used as entertainment gaming i mean it's right now it's used across enterprise you know, I mean, Correct, yeah. yeah healthcare e- education so do you see uh, the other verticals besides entertainment gaming picking up in india or is there uh, that that would be probably bigger uh, bigger than entertainment i feel mm-hmm. um things like like medical medic, medical and pharma big pharma mm-hmm. finance probably not so much but yes visualizing data in 3d mm-hmm. uh gives a big understanding but i guess maybe i don't know about here but you know it, it is a big area to get into mm-hmm. but definitely place uh things like medicine um homeland security mm-hmm. uh kind of simulating um what if scenarios of disaster management and that mm. kind of stuff mm. so yeah those will definitely be big uh, out out here i think yeah it's right so so in the immersive news space i mean you uh, you said you were even helping out times yeah so what what's the opportunity over there and you think that the the, the indian news um, or the media are not looking at that opportunity yeah they, they short sighted they are see for example a long time back um i actually was speaking to times a long time uh, ago mm-hmm. i had got in touch with them it, you know it was like it was in the back of their mind probably mm-hmm. growing and then one fine day um republic tv announced that they're going to do completely every day they're going to have one piece of news in vr yeah. and we've got some experts coming in i don't know who right. they were but they did get some experts coming in to teach them mm-hmm. and i saw about approximately six or seven pieces on on the republic tv side and it's not there anymore i think mm. so it just fizzled out mm. but uh, but yeah but um, if you look at al jazeera in in qatar in bbc and you've got the new york times they're actually producing pieces that are you know that are, that are worthy like in vr and and definitely now in ar so yeah i mean there's so much of rich content out here mm. that you could actually r- write a story on and from this for me ar is more interesting uh then VR both are but um AR is like you could literally see stuff in your living room mm-hmm. out there and a news piece going with it and VR of course yeah right. but yeah it's been slow it's been slow on the on the uptake is there any way you think you could i mean possibly maybe you could nudge the the bollywood studios or or these media houses to kind of look at immersive technology yeah i've been blowing a lot of money doing that for the whole of <laughs> last year but but no yeah now they now they are and in fact there is uh, i'm actually working on a piece again nda's uh, forbid me from saying it until they say it first but there right. is one in production already right. uh, so it's like connected with the bollywood thing right and then hopefully eros it's like uh, the people themselves are going to start producing pilots first mm. uh, understanding the medium what mm. goes into editing creating mm. and then there will be the important thing which i like is that then the stories that are commissioned mm. will be from how much potential is there to also maximize it across the platforms platforms being um, you know 2d ott tv mm. as well as the immersive thing so that will like more bonus points will be given for that right. i think after netflix did bander snatch now mm. everyone's talking interactive or branching narratives and stuff like that right. it's part immersive definitely it's immersive but now think about a vr uh, mm. piece mm. with a branching narrative in mm. there now that becomes the next level to you know to aspire to like something as simple as a escape room thing right so so, so w- yeah. w- where do you see the future of entertainment going you know because i'm pretty much excited because i think all of these technologies are conver- going to converge you know right from your yeah. uh, uh, artificial intelligence and iot Definitely. blockchain possibly is going to converge into vr and, and with with the photorealistic content at this point in time being done maybe in the next couple of years is going to get really really cool what 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 are your views on the future of entertainment yeah i think it would definitely be i mean location based is a big thing because that allows you know to you to be physically there with your friends probably getting into a place and um living i i prefer it rather than just playing gaming mm. to actually be part of a story or or a narrative that's uh, taking place out there 
And why not in your own house now with the Quest, the Oculus Quest that's released? It literally has got, you know, room scale tracking mm -hmm. without having to put trackers around the house and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, yeah, you could actually literally be in a film right. uh, or in a story unfolding uh, and and be a part of it, actively take part of or actually watch something. In fact, one of the pieces that, that we're producing right now as a pilot mm -hmm. is going to be that where it's you're watching the film, you're like, in a room like this mm. and you're actually watching the film but there's artifacts around so after you watch it the first time mm. it's in fact it's a music driven thing so you could literally go pick up one of the right. records out there mm. put it on and you'll hear an old song for, mm. for instance so mm. it has multiple views out there mm. plus it's got a thing on music of the old like indian music right. and you're watching a story take place there right. So, so it, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Looking forward for, to it. Yeah. So LBVRE is obviously that's the next big thing, and that's push driving adoption. Yeah. At least uh, internationally in US and China and a lot of uh, around Europe also. Yeah. Somehow that's that's missing away in, in India. And with LBVRE, the, the I mean, with these free roam games with these yeah. haptic feedback suits. Yes, what you mentioned that uh, where you can feel the game. Yeah. That's gonna come in play. When we say you feel the game, maybe people do not understand that, or they think yeah. they they can't fathom it. You know, yeah. because you know how can you interact with something which is digital, yeah? Yeah. and yeah. how would a digital world interact yeah, with you? Too. So it's only when these LBVREs actually come down over here, where people actually experience it firsthand, maybe they'll understand the possibilities of interactive co content. So, See, but it's like yeah, it's. It's not only them. For example, look, look, look at you have to do it right. Mm. Look what happened to IMAX. Right. They closed down. Right. They were taking off the shelf mm. games mm. and putting it out there. And that's not LBVR. The, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, the Void have got it right. Hologate is another platform which yes. has got it quite right. Yes. And the Void, yeah, right. Hologate void, as void. well. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, these places are actually looking at content driven LBVR. So, mm. yes. And then when you talk about, uh, let's say, digitizing mm. a film star. Mm. or an actor and mm. stuff like that and if he's you know touch reaching out and touching hands uh, mm. to you then when you put your haptic suit you could literally feel mm. someone's signature or mm. you know things like that. Mm. you know those are that's where it's that's where it's going at i i, I feel so how how far or close do you think we are from full dive vr where we can actually uh, all the senses will be simulated and um, where you don't really understand what's virtual and what's real uh, I don't know. Where estimates would be maybe about fifteen years. I mm -hmm. guess. I mean, that's so. Being, so you see that yeah. as an eventuality. It's definitely, like, that's it, it, definitely. It's like yeah, fifteen years should be should be a very conservatively fair mm -hmm. estimate that it will actually maybe be affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to to have it in your house, like you have the headsets now. So yeah. So so when something uh, something like that happens, when a full dive VR happens, so everything that you see in a black mirror does that come true? Uh, that's not the scary part. That's actually the interesting part for me, right, right. because it's like, yeah, how how are you going to how will it mutate into what will it mutate? Mm. What is real? Um, well, you know, my one of my favorite authors is um, Ray Kurzweil, right. and the fact that his dream was is not was I guess is to to get his his dead father back to life based mm. on. AI and like right. you say, machine learning and the documents and the uh, and the music and the letters that he has of his father. Well, then of course it goes into the whole debate of um, is that a copy or is that a you know it's not the real person. But who's to say? I mean, like half the time, half the people that you see uh, or you interact with on Facebook, mm -hmm. they're the same. They're the same thing from morning to night. They're either posting selfies or someone's writing messages and stuff like that. Who's to say that that could not be a chatbot? That is doing a regular thing. It's very rare that you find people who are unique in thinking every day, right? right. Mostly, it's the same old thing. So uh, it's 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 open to to understanding and where we're going with this whole tech of digital beings and right. So, right. Yeah. so you you were mentioning uh, volumetric. Yeah. So, do you think volumetric is the future of VR? Because that's when you'll be able to walk around. Yeah, but it, it's like 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 I think of it as. As a kind of, I would call it a genre of filmmaking. Like mm -hmm. you have, uh, you know, genres not in the typical sense now. Mm -hmm. But I think VR would be like a genre because, for example, you can't. Well, realistically, you could not probably do volumetric capture outdoors mm -hmm. of a huge scene, right? It would be more like documentary, more like narrative. Maybe maybe Alfred Hitchcock kind of films like Twelve Angry Men in a room, mm -hmm. that kind of 
narrative drama pieces mm. captured in in a volumetric form yes that would be lovely because the first time i just want to sit back and watch it mm. and then the second viewing i would want to go in and mm. get the finer details maybe mm. find an easter egg in there right. like someone's notes are you know and then there and you actually find a clue mm. so you know mm. probably that that guy is the murderer or the other one is mm. and the rest of the the people don't know it mm. and then if you put in ai in there into one of the let's say in gaming it's called the what non player character npcs right. Right. so yeah if you put some ai in there mm. and that person is eyeing you and your you know your eye line is being tracked how mm. long are you looking at something and that gets fed in into another machine learning agent out there mm. so the next time you come back into that film mm. that person looks at you differently now we're talking forget band snatch this is like a whole different direction that <laughs> but it's not going to be one of the spider-man kind of films right. where you're volumetrically filming because that's boring right it's going to be the psychological connection with uh you know with with a good story in there right. so so w- w- what what would volumetric do to sports uh, i uh, don't know exactly uh, social impact content where you are there where you can yeah. actually see maybe a person doing something committing a crime and you watching that and you can't do anything about it and you know? i mean what yeah. kind of impact would it leave on uh, a person yeah hopefully i don't know hopefully it probably will not give them bad ideas but it will give them i better ideas of how to be more human or you yeah. know that's what we're looking at with uh, yeah. with the whole empathy thing right. in right. the traditional sense so hopefully it just probably or if you actually film i mean you could literally volumetrically film let's say you know, i was coming here on the way i saw on the footpath you know mm-hmm. like these uh, little shacks that are there mm-hmm. and I saw a kid playing there because the car the taxi stopped the signal mm-hmm. i'm thinking that that person that kid's life that you capture that and um don't want to romanticize poverty but generally you know these are the things that drive change right um mm-hmm. so that's one of the uh, one of the things that you could do and on the more happier side it could be uh, your your child your child like thing the famous hololens demo is there of that of capturing his child playing around there seeing them grow so these are happy moments like a birthday thing you know so yeah there are there are definitely both sides that uh, thing and it can drive empathy as well as it can it's like let's say the future of photography or memories mm. you know when it's volumetric captured and played back mm. that's probably where it's at i don't see it more for glamour of, of kind of like a like i said like a superhero movie or something mm. is just lost i think it's the intimate people to people connections captured either as a fiction piece or as real life um that would be you know where we'll be then putting on our headsets and reliving your child's birthday or your prom or whatever you know right yeah yeah, yeah exactly i mean what happens when ai gets completely sentient that's another story another topic yeah, altogether <laughs> but but yes like uh, you mentioned that we do need to be a little bit more bold more brave Definitely. and more open to these new technology because it's inevitable we have to accept yeah. it yeah yes it's a double edged sword yes it it's got these uh, uh, bad points also which needs to maybe a body needs to come together like a regulatory body and kind of have the conversation of the moral and ethical implications which might uh, uh, arise yeah, with, yeah. with this technology way but yes i mean it's it's the source of we moving for us moving forward oh, yeah, uh, yeah. as uh, entire human race so yes i think there is we need to in, in our own small way maybe if it's it's a content studio it, Correct. it's yeah right. or, or yes. whatever we need to that's be was, more open yes, into adopting to these new technologies that's why said, like the baby steps would be yeah. definitely yeah mm-hmm. getting this thing out there mm-hmm. getting you know getting a story out there mm-hmm. and then letting letting audiences uh experience it and maybe the, the younger generation right. starts thinking differently right. but no what the a lot of the ott platforms out here it's tv platforms out here it's like it's formula you know it's like um put out the trash mm-hmm. and then i hate this thing but it's a typical we are like this only right. attitude that does not right. make them evolve and and why not if you speak hindi we speak english uh, mm-hmm. very well we can definitely we got creative people mm-hmm. who write stories out there that could definitely be out there in all the way I mean like look at Cannes mm. it's, it's it's a fashion parade when india is there there's no films out there <laughs> so it needs to change yeah. you know it's all the actresses are out there sporting 
the latest fashion, but no film from India has gone there. Yeah, that's sad. That, yeah. But it, it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the truth, though. Yeah, but that's yeah. And I hope somebody looks at this and and, <laughs> and brings about a change. We yeah, need content yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah. We cannot just so. It, it's very clear. I mean, though we are a very traditional country. Yeah. But digital is taking over in a big way. It is right. Yeah, yeah. So so the entire. Uh, at one point in time, your your theaters, you know, it used to be Silver Jubilee, Golden Jubilee, Diamond Jubilee. At that, yeah. this point in time, yeah, there are yeah. theaters which is in, in, the, in the weekdays. It's it's running empty. Yeah. It, it, it's only these weekends they, they have yeah, a full house, yeah, yeah. and it's only these big budget movies or, or yeah, something yeah. which is indie and really cut cut through. They are the ones which which it's really drawing the audience. So. Is the entertainment industry not aware about this analytic or data, which is very clearly there that the digital is is taking over, and are they not looking at the new medium? I th I think they? maybe I think maybe they are now. I mean, like uh, the fact that I don't know what happened to the. Um, I think it was Paramount that uh, last year, I think at the end of December, had done an experiment with this VR company called. Uh, big screen or big picture, I forget the name, mm. uh, where they actually launched Top Gun. Uh, big as screen a, VR. Big screen VR, yeah, mm -hmm. as, a, as an experiment. And I saw that as the opening up of a whole new distribution window, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a VR distribution window for, uh, for, for movies where you mm -hmm. put on your headset and definitely you could probably pull in your Facebook friends list and mm -hmm. invite them over, like I could buy you a ticket and like, mm -hmm. we sit down there, we can talk with the headsets on. Mm -hmm. And I always say that, yeah, you can, I can mute you, which I can't do in real life. Yeah. But, but, you know, so it's like a whole, um, like VR could be another medium for it. Mm -hmm. So if they're, uh, getting back to your question about them not realizing that, you know, like cinema is dead, uh, they're probably, uh, going to it. But I think in India, a lot of, uh, people can't afford these headsets. So, and it's a, everyone says it's a community thing, but you know what? I go to a cinema and I hate it. Mm. Like even back in Dubai, I, I would go on a Sunday. Sunday is the first working day of the week. I'd rather go on a Sunday morning when the cinema is empty mm. because otherwise you just got people making noise out there and you're not really enjoying the film. So yeah. for me, yeah, that, that argument is moot about <laughs> what's better. Right. Exactly. You need people uh, yeah. or, or these passionate creators who move the medium forward, you know, if yeah. you feed them something which is, you give them a bad experience, yeah. people yeah. are not going to come to it, yeah. you know, uh, in, uh, in this in view again. Yeah. So, is there any content that you've been like really inspired by? Or I would say about? Felix and Paul, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the stuff that they first produced, even it was a simple thing. In fact, it reminds me of the studio. It was um, Patrick Stewart the, the, playing the piano mm -hmm. and you're sitting down out there and it's mm -hmm. nothing. It was just that piece, that five minute, song but it was like so realistically done mm -hmm. and then other things that they've done like uh the um clinton in africa that mm -hmm. was that was really nice that would actually made you feel that you're mm -hmm. in this little hut in africa and you know the president is sitting out there the ex-president talking to the people so they really pick their pieces well they actually used video vr mm -hmm. where um you know pushed the medium very very ahead of what was possible at that time mm -hmm. Uh, not even getting into volumetric, which mm. is, mm. you know, what's coming up next. So, yeah, they, they are definitely like I would call the gold standard in producing VR content, VR films. And hopefully there is, I don't see anyone else doing it like that. Right, right. Visualize I, in the in UK, do good stuff. Mm. And I think there's one guy, I forget his name. Uh, he's a single guy. I forget his name. He's, he, you know, he does it right. But uh, everywhere else, it's people buying a 360 camera and sticking it there and, uh, you know, shooting. I, now that I decided to get hands on with the thing, like, uh, I was very upset the other day. I actually wrote to Kandao on, on the Facebook group that mm. uh, shooting in, in flat mode on their camera. And I don't know why no one else, well, someone else had complained about this two years ago and it's not been fixed till today. Mm. Uh, bright red was mm. not, was captured all wrong in there. And I've lost footage on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't shoot that scene again. So, you know, it's things like that. It's like people are just recording it and putting it out there and saying, we are doing VR filmmaking. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's about why have you put the camera in a particular place? Right. What's the emotion? Right. Uh, why are you doing this thing in VR? Right. It needs to be answered. Right.
you mentioned kandao so you yeah. can you talk about i mean because you you understand stereoscopic and you know we are cameras so would you be would you suggest some cams which maybe uh, the listeners till the workhorse is uh, i would say like the from multiple perspectives uh, uh, the kandao obsidian r mm. uh, because i believe that it's got a higher enough res the new one that's out the titan which i i hope to get so right, right. to try it out at least uh, mm. that's supposed to be what i would say like you know the new benchmark right because it's got but we we, we don't know this, uh, the yeah we don't know there's no we, yeah we i think do. it's very few lucky right. people who've got that camera right. right but from specs ideally that's that's great it's got these micro four third eight cameras around mm. so definitely it will have low light uh, better performance in low light the but price the, point is reasonable yeah about 18000 i think dollars right, yeah right. the so the for now for me the kandao because things like it does not overheat too much uh, it's uh, let's say it's stable mm -hmm. from from my experience uh, in the field and uh, yes but these things like these anomalies like not being able to capture color properly uh, there are these things need to be fixed but i would recommend it still the obsidian r uh, over the obsidian s which i thought was a better one because it had high speed um, mm -hmm. thing until i realized that I shot slow motion with that camera at 100 uh, I think 80 frames 100 frames mm -hmm. 120 frames and it was it was rubbish because they didn't tell you that it actually drops on the well they did but I didn't realize it mm -hmm. that it drops on the resolution of that mm -hmm. in order to get that so the finished thing at 4K looks all jaggy it, mm -hmm. it's like a so I would say the Obsidian R is good at 8K right you can bring it down to 4K for display in the headsets So that's a good camera. That's a good one. Right. I mean, so so what do you think is the f present scenario? What is the what's happening right now? What can we do right now? What's possible right now? And what are you doing right now? I'm trying to, uh, like I said, like build these. Well, calling them incubators and labs, mm -hmm. but I I'm trying to actually get uh, people creatively to think about a story and how best it could be represented. uh in a realistic manner for audiences mm -hmm. so getting that creative thing in there um because like entertainment is uh, something that i that i like a, a good story and um so my thing is like actually getting filmmakers to to see uh the potential of using tech like vr and ar mm -hmm. as mediums it's more than it's like it's actually mediums of presenting a story mm -hmm. and uh hopefully once they see that they start realizing that uh you know uh maybe they they see beyond the frame then right. and they're like okay uh, how can we actually get people more because that's been the thing of filmmaking for for a long time right making people feel that they belong in there and now you have the medium to actually do that mm. so hopefully um it like advising them and how to get there how do you actually do that from a creative tech perspective the new movie lion king Oh yeah I've not. so so, so uh, John Favreau he, he shot the entire thing in VR so so that yeah, yeah, com yeah completely yeah. in VR it's it's almost like a game they, they gamified yeah. it and yeah. what he yeah. did was for the, the for the shoot uh, he and his assistant director would get into the visual scene because yeah. they 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 designed the entire jungle space in VR in unity and so he yeah. is assistant is dop yeah. and uh, set designer art designer they would all jump into vr with the stc vibe yeah. yeah and the dop would like and like take an aerial shot and look at all yeah. those things so so it, do you think vr it could be the future of filmmaking and that's how mm, you think you maybe uh but uh, cameron had done that a long time back right. with with abita avatar where he was actually virtually framing mm -hmm. only it was probably done with i think motion builder and some other nice. uh, crude software but mm -hmm. fair enough it's marking the shots and getting the shots and then rendering it at full uh, fidelity was is where it's at even the, this also i think you could not render it in unity for film so mm -hmm. you'd probably frame your shots and stuff like that mm -hmm. but yes so tech like vr uh, and these kind of well the simul cam to quote uh, um cameron is is always been there mm -hmm. i think but it's become more affordable with the headsets and all that to actually use it and even an indie producer mm -hmm. for example i remember uh, having the dk2 the mm -hmm. headset and at one workshop that i was doing uh, talking at the it was at ramuji film city i actually showed it to them i had it on this the fig rig it's called this round metal frame mm -hmm. so you know right now you could use trackers which mm -hmm. is like the htc vibe but the dk2 was also tracked right because you've got a camera out there 
and it becomes a tracker. Mm -hmm. So literally by mounting that as a camera, you could actually track a shot. Right. And that was recorded down at, at that time onto the uh, Unreal Engine 4 timeline. Mm -hmm. So did a, a kind of a walkthrough like that with a shot and we recorded on the timeline and then I could play it back and then retweak it or go slow. Wow. So in a sense, we're showing that. So what I mean is I can even an indie filmmaker can actually use this now. Use this. Uh, let's say now with the with the with the quest, mm. all you need is an app, mm. and you could literally be filming, uh, you know, your next uh, scene in a room like this for two D, mm. but wearing that headset on. Right. If you have a CG uh, module of the of the thing, so yeah, right. I mean, this these are good tech. This is good stuff that's out there, but yeah. Right. A any advice to these budding f filmmakers or VR filmmakers or possibly studios and ODD platforms? Uh, I would say that, yes, uh, I would say like, you know, uh, get in tech people hmm. to talk to filmmakers. Like hmm. if it's an ODD platform, then you need an R&D division in there. Hmm. Look at Netflix. I mean, they're way ahead. Why? Hmm. Why did they release Bandersnatch? Because they were doing these things. Besides that, of course, on the thorough back end, they're actually talking about algorithms that um do bitrate uh, you know so that the quality is all that but a lot of tv platforms in india are mostly broadcasters who've decided now it's digital to make money on so just like piping it like that but the r d the pushing the medium forward i think that would be the advice is get tech people and get the iit people in uh talking to creative people or get the creative filmmakers from the from the schools that are out there to sit with coders and start creating stuff that is, you know, that goes beyond simple uh, general entertainment that is there. Lovely, so, lovely, yeah. lovely. So on that note, thank you. It was a pleasure talking thanks, to you. Thanks, thanks, uh, Eddie. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So yeah, it's marry technology with okay. creativity. That's that's super yeah. awesome. And I guess yeah, you should need to look at this AR, VR, MR is the next big thing. Whether it's you're a filmmaker or an OTT platform or a studio. You need to look at the new technology because it's going to change uh, the uh, entertainment or it's going to be an evolution for entertainment. So it was a pleasure talking to Clyde uh, and uh, I'm going to have all his details below. So if you want to reach out, you could reach out with him. And if you like what you hear, see, please press the subscribe button. And until next time, see you guys. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you very much.